Welcome to the fifth of nine videos in our course Pro Video Editing with an iPad or iPhone using LumaFusion. In the last video, we went over the essential tools you'll need and how to use them. In this video, we'll cover the clip editor. We'll be going over all of its parameters. Additionally, we'll be talking about accessing it and using it. Plus, we'll cover the LumaFusion preview function. Everybody's got to start somewhere, and that's why we've made a list, a shopping list of the nine essential things that every beginner filmmaker needs. It's really easy to get. All you have to do is click on the link in the card there or a link in the description, and you can get it today. So here we are again at the iOS homepage, and we're going to be opening up LumaFusion. Today, we're going to be talking all about the clip editor. And the thing about the clip editor is it makes LumaFusion far more dynamic. It's more than just an editor now. You're able to jump in and dive deep into adding keyframes and all sorts of other adjustments that you might not see on other apps, but even more, it really takes advantage of the touch interface. The clip editor is really easily accessed. There's two different ways to access it. The first is just double tapping onto the clip you wanna open. So if I double tap there and it brings up the clip editor, I'm gonna go back again. That's this top arrow on the top left. I'm gonna tap in the timeline just so you can see what I'm doing here. I'm going to tap onto the clip. And then if I look and find the pencil right down at the bottom in the middle of the screen, I can tap on that. And that also brings up the clip editor. Just a little bit faster if you double tap, but depending on what you're doing, one might be easier than the other. Now, the cool thing here is this gives you a deep dive into each of your clips, able to do lots of different things. So the first thing we're gonna do is see right on the top that we have a bunch of different sizing presets that will allow you to create zooms, tilts, all sorts of different things just by keyframing the movement of the clip. The other thing it'll allow you to do is flop your shot as well as rotate it and then of course saving your motion as a preset so you don't have to use the ones that are built in you can create your own we can go into fit mode here and we can see that it's not really doing anything to this because it doesn't need to get any bigger than the frame but if you were say using an image you'd be able to fit fill focus or stretch your image to fit and you can do that really by grabbing the corner here and changing it as well I'm gonna undo that, which is just found right here at the top of the screen, same button as in the timeline. We're gonna go over to cropping. This is super helpful if you're doing green screen so you can crop out all the garbage maybe that isn't gonna be in the keyed out image so you don't have to worry about trying to key it or anything like that. Additionally, just cropping in general is something that you'll use far more often than you'd think. So we can, you know, adjust those, you know, and you can see what they're doing. They're really simple. I can invert the crop so if i go left and i go invert it's just going to show what i cut out of it instead of getting rid of it and i'm going to bring that back to zero then we can take a look at the size and position and you can see we can move it left and right we can move it up and down i'm going to undo twice and you can rotate it all around to get kind of crazy there <laughs> and uh, you know and then we can scale it and change the x or the y parameters which just give you all sorts of flexibility, maybe not for everything, but being able to do it and do it so easily is really nice. And last is the blending modes. I'm going to tap here with the dots with the lines, and you can see all of the normal blend modes you'll find in really any editor are right here. So if you want to lighten or overlay or stencil alpha, any of that stuff is going to be in here and you're going to be able to use it. That means you're going to be able to use textures, alpha channel footage, doing all sorts of different things that you might not think you could do in a mobile editor like this. So I'm going to close that. Now let's go over keyframes. If you're not familiar with keyframes, all they are is an indicator that something's going to change from one point to the next. Those keyframes are just markers saying something is starting here and ending here and I wanna make it do something. It could be scaling, it could be position, it could be all sorts of things. Keyframes are really powerful. Let's take a look at how to turn them on and what they can do. So uh, first things first, if I look at the clip editor now and I look at the bottom left corner, I can see these three circles with a plus in it. And if I tap on that, that now turns on keyframe mode. Now I'm in size and position, if you see over here on the right of the screen. And then I'm gonna go to another point in the shot, maybe right here and I'm going to make it scale from that very first point that you can see over here on the bottom left to another keyframe, and I'm going to scale up to about there. And you can see all of a sudden it added a keyframe there. Now that blue little keyframe, 
I'm going to go back to the beginning. You can see what's happening between those two keyframes. I have one that starts where everything is normal, a normal keyframe that isn't doing anything, and then I'm having it scale. And now you can see there the, the wireframe of what it's doing. But then when I press play, you can see that it's doing that without showing us the edges, which in this case is a pretty intense little shot there, right? Going over the Golden Gate like that. Now, keyframes are not limited to size and position. You could add them to the cropping, the fit mode. Uh, in fact, that's really how these presets are, are working is through keyframes, just pre-made keyframes. You can get really crazy with the cheese whiz here and add all sorts of dynamics to your shot that wasn't there before. So I'm going to undo this because that could be distracting. Now I want to talk about adjusting your edit for maybe a different delivery location. And this is the idea of taking your 16 by 9 shot that is shot in a rectangle, just like this shot here, and making it into something that would work on, say, TikTok or Instagram, which is a 9 by 16 vertical rectangle instead of a horizontal one. What I'm going to do is I'm going to come back out to my edit here. And what I'm going to go back to is go back to my project. And the reason for this is I don't want to be changing the project I've already made. I want to duplicate it and do those changes to something else so I'm not destructively editing something I might need later. So I'm going to go back to the bottom left corner there where I can go back to my projects. It shows me my masterpiece and my next masterpiece. My next masterpiece is the one I'm working on right now. So I'm going to duplicate that. We went over that. It's the two pages with the plus in it right here at the bottom left. Tap on that. Now it says my masterpiece too. And now I can make changes to it. I'm not going to be destroying any work in the other project there. So that's a really helpful use of, of project duplication. So what I'm going to do here is going to go over to the far right where there's this gear with the question mark in it. And this is where I can change my my project. And I spoke about this in the first video that you can change all these settings later on if you have a need. And this is a really great need for something you produced in normal HD or 4K 16 by 9, and you're now trying to adapt it for vertical viewing on social media. So all I have to do is go over to at the aspect ratio and tap on that. And I can change it to any of these right now if I wanted to. But I can see right here, I have 16 by 9 landscape, which is what it is currently. And then I have 9 by 16 portrait. If I just tap on 9 by 16 portrait, boom. Now it is in 9 by 16. So I'm going to actually go into this project and take a look at it. And you can see, man, it's doing it kind of strange, right? Like at least for this clip here, it's just fitting to it. What's the deal? Well, it's probably one of the modes that we had it in before because it is auto framing this. So if I double tap on our editor here and I'm going to go into fit mode and oh, look at that. It does. It has stretch. So I'm just going to say fit. No, that's not what I want. Fill. That's the one I want. I want actually a nice shot of just the bridge in this and say this is what I'm using to frame. Now, the cool thing about this is that when you're changing from 16 by 9 to 9 by 16, not everything's going to fit in view. And the keyframes will allow you to do something kind of like pan and scan, which is changing the pan of the shot after you've captured it so that the viewer can see what you intended them to. But in this case, I'm just going to use it to center up the bridge. I'm going to go to the beginning of the shot. And at the beginning of the shot, it's not centered at all. Now I'm going to turn off my size and position because that's from before. I'm going to go to my blending and I'm going to turn that off too. So now you can see I have no keyframes next to any of the control stack settings over here on the right. And I'm going to position this shot so that it looks a little smoother because of our new framing. So the first things first, I'm going to turn on keyframes. I'm going to then move my shot to where I want it to. I really like the touch adjustment of this. It's easy to maneuver. I like it a little bit better than having to use just the controls over on the right here. So then I'm going to move a little bit further. And right about here, is it? am I centered? Uh, I need to move over a little bit, maybe. I'm going to go a little bit further down, right about here at the apex of the shot and move it over. And we'll see how this looks. Let me bring it all the way back to here and move a little bit there. So now I have four keyframes on here and let's play that and see how it looks. And it's doing a lot better job of having the road right in the middle of the shot. Now the shot, you know, might've been moving a little bit. San Francisco is known for being quite windy. And of course this is open to the ocean right here. So it was nice to be able to make those quick little adjustments, no big deal. And now it's ready to be used in a vertical video.
Now let's go back to our regular project again. And I wanna show you how you can pre-trim clips. If you wanted to go through and mark the in and out points of your clips so that you have just the good part of your shot, none of the slop at the beginning or at the end, just the meat of your shot. So what we can do is I'm gonna open up the project. If I open up our extreme SSD, we can see we have a bunch of shots here and let's pull one that I haven't used yet. And you can actually see that I've used a clip, especially like this one here, as you can see, I have some yellow writing on it and you can see I have already trimmed this clip. Now let's go to this other shot here and you can see no trimming at all. So I tapped on it and it, that's what brought this up. Now I can trim here to whatever I wanted to. Maybe that's the full shot I wanna go on. So let's go to the beginning here and I'm gonna press play so I can see the fullness of that shot. Maybe that's not the right part of the shot that I wanna use, but pretty cool shot, but I was able to trim it really easy by just grabbing these brackets on the right and left. So let's see here, I'm gonna change this to the better part of the shot, which I think is like right there. And now if I go and put that in my edit, I can tap and hold and insert it in here if I want, which I'm gonna do that. Now I have that here, but you can see now, if you look up at the actual clip in my menu here, it has little bracketed numbers. That means it's been trimmed and has an in and out point set. And you can also see that on the clip, if you look underneath it here, you can see this spot right here that has a little bit more bold of a line. Now there's another way to operate within LumaFusion and that's using gestures. And the nice thing is, is this pre-trimming clips I was showing you, we can also do with gestures. So let's pull up another clip. We have this another drone shot that's lovely and we want to trim it, but I don't wanna use these bars the way I had. So instead, I'm going to use gestures. I can drag my finger here along the timeline and say I want the shot to start right here when this boat is right there. If I swipe down, it adds an in mark. If I go down and find here, maybe it's right there with that boat, leave the frame. If I swipe up, it'll add a out mark. Now I can just grab the clip, tap and hold, and drag it down and insert in the shot here. Now, of course, we can swipe to go in the timeline. That's real easy, left and right. If we wanna see the shot full frame, all we gotta do is double tap on it and it brings it full frame. Another cool feature is you're able to add and respond to Frame.io comments within LumaFusion. And lastly, let's talk about the incremental scrubber. All you gotta do is press and hold the play button and it brings up this different view of your scrubber and you're able to do a lot more close and slow movements if you're really trying to get macro and look at your edit. And you can see I have a lot more control. When I lift my finger, it goes away. It's really that simple. In the next video, we'll cover how to make color adjustments and add a LUT or style. We'll talk about adding effects, demonstrate keying and stabilize footage and explore the speed editor. Take this information and challenge yourself to use it today. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to get your shopping list of the nine essential things every filmmaker needs, link in the card or in the description.